everybody. Welcome into Talking Fitchburg on this Friday, May 14th, 2021. I'm Jeremy Crosby. Hope you had a wonderful day. Glad you're tuning with us uh, this evening. A little bit earlier than normal if you're watching uh, the early edition here tonight. Uh, still replays the regular time, but uh, we're coming in just before softball tonight, uh, which is uh, happening, uh, well, really happening here shortly or again have happened pending when you watch this, but we're glad uh, you're here and we have a busy show for you. We'll get you the latest headlines as we work into the weekend. Uh, we have a special interview with uh, our uh, chief of police, Chad Brecklin. He'll be here talking about National Police Week. We'll break that down uh, and talk about the department to uh, where they're at uh, today. Plus, we'll check in with Kimberly over at the Fitchburg Star. She'll break down this past week's council meeting. So a lot to get to here. And we start with the bike tour. Fitchburg Sustainability Bike Tour is scheduled and ready for you to join them. This is going to be happening uh, next weekend. Bike Fitchburg and city staff are leading a sustainable uh, bike uh, tour on Saturday, May 22nd. Second, the group will begin at the City Hall campus, the parking lot, at 1 p.m. And then you'll be biking to several locations in West Central Fitchburg over uh, two, uh, the two and a half hour tour. A two hour tour. I just always think of that when that comes up. Probably dates me on that. Uh, the group uh, will talk about a few of the steps taken in recent years to reduce the city's ecological footprint and enhance residents' access to nature areas and high-quality ecosystem services. You do need to register for this. You can find all that information online uh, at FitchburgWI.gov. Uh, state trail passes are required at multiple portions of the ride, which can be purchased in advance uh, or the day of the ride. Cost is $25 for an annual pass or $5 for one day pass. Got any questions? Call my friend Fru, uh, Fru, Phil. Fru, Gil. <laughs> I guess he's not so much my friend. <laughs> Phil Groupie, uh, Fitchburg Sustainability Specialist. Uh, we'll be uh, working with him too uh, to take you on that bike tour here uh, through Fact TV. Uh, but I don't want to give away too much until we get all of those things uh, worked out. All right, Verona Area School District wants to confirm that you have the right mailing address as they get ready for their back to school registration information during the summer. So have you moved recently? Don't miss out on the important back to school information this summer. Please make sure you go and use the uh, change form uh, on the website. If you've got any questions, you can contact uh, the Enrollment Center at 608-845-4360 or R E. That's reg at verona.k12.wi.us with your questions. All right, share your photo for a chance to win some prizes. Check this out. If you're looking for uh, a quiet and tranquil place to shake off the week's stress, well, we've got one for you. Morton Forest County Park is a great for all weekend hiking. And when you visit, check out uh, the Story Walk. The napping house there are so many different things uh going on but if you visit there or any of the dane county parks this month share your photo uh with of uh, your visit with healthy parks healthy healthy parks healthy and you uh, have a chance to win some gift cards posts uh, must be set to public to be eligible and uh you can see uh, the details there uh, on uh, your screen Again, uh, this is uh, kind of a fun event here. So if you're uh, interested in participating, uh, please uh, join in on doing that, uh, helping showing off all of our great parks here in Dane County. All right, finally, Art in the Park at Marshview. Uh, set this uh, up for you. Art in the uh, Park, uh, Marshview. This will be at the Leisure uh, Family Heritage Center, or Leisure Family Heritage Center. Uh, this event uh, is uh, going to be a lot of fun here if you uh, are interested in it. Uh, anyone, uh, oh, let me jump down to the details here. Uh, join us for Art in the Park uh, uh, at the uh, Heritage Center. Uh, no artistic talent needed, just the desire to have fun. We take the time to guide you step by step to complete your very own take home masterpiece. All canvases come pre. Uh, uh, pre uh, uh, pre traced uh, by our artist instructors. If you would like a blank canvas, you can do that as well. Andrew, you you're probably a good uh, artist, right? Get into the arts. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah. <laughs> if uh, meetings, uh, friends, please uh, list the names uh, of the attendees. And uh, yeah, it's gonna you'll get your own section there. That's such a beautiful park. If you have not been out to it, I think it's a hidden gem. Uh, that's where they've got uh, camping, uh, hiking. They got everything there. So if you're interested in checking that out, uh, just check out the Dane County Park System for more information. All right, that does it for our headlines. Coming up next, we open up the digest. We're going to be uh, talking with Chad Brooklyn about National Police Week. That's next right here on Talking Fitchburg. We're all just trying to keep things running for those who rely on us. Ready! 
That's why we don't have time to be sick with the flu. And especially this year, no one has time to get sick. Get a flu shot for yourself and those around you too. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining me today from the Fitchburg Police Department on a special interview. We got a two for this month. We got uh, your chief, Chad Brecklin. Chad, welcome back to the show and happy National Police Week. Thank you, Jeremy. It's always a pleasure getting to chat with you. And the bonus appearance of the month is even just like icing on top of the cake. You know it, Chad, uh, and uh, glad you're taking the time out. And in all seriousness, thank you. Uh, and to everybody on the, the police department, uh, Fitchburg, we appreciate uh, what you're doing. Uh, and uh, we're glad that we're able to talk about this uh, this week. Um, certainly a lot of buzz in the police world for, for many years, uh, and especially in the last couple of years. Um, as you take a look at this year's National Police Week, um, is there a different vibe in the police department? What what is everybody uh, what's everybody doing as you reflect uh, on uh, all the good work uh, and and happenings uh, around the world? Yeah, so clearly there's been uh, it's been a challenging year uh, year plus uh, to be in the policing profession. First, starting with pandemic uh, conditions um, last March, and then uh, leading into ongoing civil unrest uh, in our country as a result of. Uh, largely police-related uh, uh, incidents uh, in our communities. So, without a doubt, it's been it's been challenging. Uh, there's certainly a level of scrutiny on police uh, that I don't think we've ever seen uh, to this extent and for this duration uh, in the in my time in the profession, uh, which is over 25 years. Um, and you know what? That is the scrutiny in some regards is appropriate. Uh, clearly, police. Uh, need to be held accountable for their actions. And that is, is definitely an important component. But I do think it's important as we you know, look at Police Week in particular, as an opportunity to recognize the sacrifice and commitment and dedication that the vast majority of police officers serving their communities uh, do day in and day out. And that's the important thing in, in the appearance today and the message that we should take away from here in the police department is, we know that uh, there are so many uh, people who are making sacrifices day in and day out. They're working long hours, they're working, working weekends, they're working holidays, they're working the third shift, so that allows them to spend time with their families in the evenings, uh, if they have young kids or a significant other or whatever the case may be. And they're willing to answer that call regardless of who calls the police in, needing of, uh, in need of assistance. They're willing to go into uh, school or business settings when there's a report of an active uh, threat in those buildings. And uh, it's just a testament to the type of people that we have in our department specifically and in our profession more generally who are willing to answer those calls and uh, you know, really take, take on a leadership role in their community and uh, help people. Chad, there's been, um, uh, you guys have had some recruitments going on and stuff, and the, the, what's the next generation police officer look like, uh, somebody who's coming into the field now uh, for the first time, uh, compared to what it was when you got in the field, what is what does that look like uh, for, for somebody? Because there is a need for, for still law enforcement, and I think that's a positive thing to look at this week is... Um, the impacts that you folks make uh, day in and day out, nobody will ever know um, unless you're uh, right there with uh, with the folks uh, that are on the job. But uh, what what's that uh, officer look like today? Yeah. I think I think that that's important to point out is what does our next generation of police officers look like? It looks it looks like a, a few different things. One, I think it's important to know is that you know it's okay to support police. 
uh, without a doubt. And it's also okay at the same time to expect police accountability. Uh, it doesn't have to be an either or proposition. And I think that that's important for our community to recognize that and, uh, and support their local police department. Because as you indicated in the question, uh, there is clearly a need for policing in our society and in our communities. But the important component of that is that the policing is done in a fair, respectful, and an equitable uh, manner. And those are the challenges that our, our, our new police officers and anyone in the profession obviously faces. And the things that the new police officers and really all police officers, again, our, our current ones as well, we want them to have sound communication skills. We want them to have sound problem solving and deductive reasoning skills. And we want them to take a look at situations with a critical eye to recognize whether or not law enforcement action is appropriate, or police action is even appropriate in a particular case, or perhaps there are other resources that are better suited and or available to help resolve this situation either on a, on a short term, i.e. that evening basis or a more long term uh, basis taking that, that longer pro uh, problem solving uh, approach. And, um, the fact of the matter is, 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 is it's a challenging profession and there's no doubt that those that are coming into the profession, we are often hearing now that they're coming into the profession to be part of change and to bring you know, that next generation of, of police officers um, here to our department. And, and that's a good thing. You know, As you mentioned, uh, things are different when I started 25 years ago. Um, you know, It doesn't mean my approach has necessarily changed uh, because I feel like I've always taken the approach and, and as have our police officers to strive to communicate, to be fair, to be professional, be respectful, uh, seek a problem solving approach and, and utilizing the community as, our, as a resource. So yeah, no doubt, challenging to say the least. Not, uh, I, I, I'm glad you went through all that, Chad, and uh, explaining that out. Uh, I think that's good to know um, uh, of that transition. And as we look at Police Week, another component of this week, uh, and this is a sharp change here, and I uh, apologize for that, but do want to comment on it. It's also a week to honor the fallen, and um, there, there's no doubt that there are more, um, there's been more deaths uh, of, of officers uh, in the line of duty. Um, or on the other side of things with mental health. Uh, as you look at those two things and reflect um, uh, from your perspective, how do you, how do you take all that in? And, and for somebody who's, on, my, who's uh, on this side of things, doesn't know the, the strain and um, stress uh, that, that, that carries with you. Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, we do honor obviously the sacrifice of uh, those who have, have paid the ultimate price in, in uh, giving their life to the policing profession. Uh, that specifically is National Peace Officer Memorial Day, which is May 15th every year. And then of course, the week in which May 15th falls is National Police Week, where we do wanna recognize the overall service of our, of our uh, people serving in the policing profession. But Employee uh, wellness is, is becoming such an important component of our, our job now as police leaders is to seek ways to help ensure the wellness of our police officers. Because as you've mentioned, not only do we face potential uh, injury and or death from circumstances uh, in which our job puts us in, but the cumulative effects of the stress and the PTSD and those sorts of things that come into play uh, have now brought uh, additional light and awareness to the um, impact of suicide in the policing profession. And all departments, uh, you know, I shouldn't say all, but you know, many departments are looking for ways to help improve employee wellness uh, in an effort to put more resources uh, being available to them to hopefully provide them with the tools and the resources that they have uh, at their disposal to help manage the stress that we see um, improve their physical, mental, financial, and emotional well-being, and, you know, really, really be more open and, and direct in our conversations and recognize that it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to be in need of help. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, that's merely a human reaction to stress and, and very difficult situations and incidents that we respond to, and it's, it's okay to ask for that help and seek that help and take care of yourself. Uh, 
Um, because if you don't take care of yourself or you're not in a position where you feel as though you're physically, mentally, emotionally, financially healthy, then you're not likely to be able to provide the best service to our community. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that uh, that piece uh, as we wrap up the interview here, uh, and uh, you know appreciate the time uh, as always, Chad. Um, uh, just uh, we've talked about it many times on our regular interviews, but uh, looking ahead in uh, policing in the police world, you've you've touched on it uh, on various points uh, today, and I appreciate that. Um, but. Uh, I think uh, something to tie into this is uh, the department uh, is always continuing to train. You're always continuing to um, learn new things, bring new things into the program. Uh, you're working on your uh, your protocols, and um, and I can't remember the other name of the <laughs> the other one you're working on, but um, you know uh, the input from the community and stuff. Uh, so in any public safety world piece. Uh, you're always looking at and trying to improve um, as a department, you know, not just a person, but as a department. Uh, and what does that look like uh, for the Fitchburg Police Department? I mean, the, the, one of the things that I talk about uh, regularly is constant improvement. And, you know, any organization, whether it's a police organization or city government or a private business, I think in order to be uh, in a position to be successful, to be responsive, carry out your duties, responsibilities, goals, and objectives in an appropriate way. You have to be looking at things from the mindset of seeking constant improvement. At the time in which we feel like we've solved the problems that we need to solve, so to speak, or our organization is you know, where it needs to be, is when we then become caught off guard by something and or we don't adapt to changes in, in uh, situations or issues uh, as quickly as we should. So. There's always a need for us in the, in the Fitchburg Police Department to be conducting regular assessment of uh, how we do business, regular self-assessment of how we individually carry out our duties and responsibilities, and always seeking constant improvement through training, education, uh, and communication with others. All right, Chad, anything else that you wanna comment uh, on this uh, National Police Week? I do. Um, I just want to. I just want to thank one, uh, the Fitchburg community, who has always supported its local police department. We have enjoyed a great deal of support over the years, and and for that I'm grateful for. And I also want to express appreciation for all of the members of the Fitchburg Police Department, both sworn and non-sworn, who serve every day uh, with sacrifice, commitment, and dedication. They are here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, to provide police service to our community. And without them, uh, our community would not be uh, as vibrant as it is. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate their service and uh, I hope that our community does as well. Chad, uh, well said, and uh, thank you again and every to every uh, law enforcement uh, person out there for, for everything you've done, even if you're retired, whatever the case may be, we appreciate it. And uh, Chad, we appreciate your time as well. Uh, thank you for sharing, and uh, we'll look forward to talking to you a little bit later uh, in this month. You bet. Thank you, Jeremy. You bet. Chad Brecklin, uh, Chief of Police here at the Fitchburg Police Department, doing a wonderful job. We'll take a quick break. More to come. You're watching Talking Fitchburg. After you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. Our hearts are made stronger by how we treat others. Put her there. The light you share can impact those around you, but so can the darkness. Later, twerps. Did Pete saying mean things bother you? So when you reach out to another person, <laughs> take a moment to consider how they will feel and let your heart be the key to making a difference. Because of you, someone's entire day, year, or even life can change. In every heart, there's hope. We're all just trying to keep things running for those who rely on us. Ready? That's why we don't have time to be sick with the flu. And especially this year, no one has time to get sick. Get a flu shot for yourself and those around you too. Well, welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Join new day from the Fitchburg star, our star, Kimberly. I don't know how many times I'm going to get to say that, but I'm totally going for it every single time. Kimberly, welcome back to the show. How are you doing today? I am good. Although at some point, I'm going to need you to pay my medical bills from the eye strain 
of me consistently rolling my eyes every time you call me the star reporter. So uh, just so you know. <laughs> the star. You didn't get it right. If you're going to get it right, the star. Thank you very much. Um, let's uh, get started here. Uh, we'll be uh, recapping uh, the recent council meeting. And uh, you you uh, have uh, picked out a couple of stories here to talk about. We'll start with the teen center. Uh, we got an update uh, on that uh, on Tuesday night. Absolutely. So I'll start by saying um, the teen center is still very much in planning stages. Um, it was brought up back in the budget process that they would buy a building. That is not happening. Um, that was not in the budget. So really what's happening now is they are doing a study. Um, so what went down at Tuesday night's meeting is so they were hoping to use the Fitchburg fund, which is around $11,003. They're just hoping to transfer that money, which is already collected by the city, was in the 2020 operating budget, was moved over. They were just hoping to put that in, um, in the bucket of money that would go towards the, the study for the teen center. Uh, the council said no to that. Um, they, they said no to it back in April. Uh, they said no again to it uh, technically. Um, they didn't actually say no on Tuesday, but we had a we had an amendment to the resolution, if you follow me, um, that would basically take moving the Fitchburg funds off of the table. Um, so the Fitchburg fund uh, money, that like $11,000 is not going to go towards the study. Instead, what they are going to do is they're going to take the money that's already collected for the Fitchburg uh, Teen Center study, which is just shy of about $30,000. Um, and they're gonna put a bid out for that. So what they're really looking to do is they're looking to talk to people in the neighborhood, see what people in the neighborhood need, what they would like, you know, what, what amenities would they like in a teen center? What resources do they need? All that kind of stuff. So um, for a while, the teen center has kind of stalled in that sense, but this really is one of the first steps forward with the teen center. So um, they have to put the bid out for uh, whatever amount of money they've collected. Um, but they are still collecting donations for the teen center. So if that's a if that's a cause someone is interested in, they can certainly still donate towards it. Um, but so that might get reflected in whatever final bid they have. So um, so yeah, the teen center, while it will not happen for probably years, uh, just because we're gonna have some tight city budgets, um, that it took its technical technical first step forward uh, with this with the study on Tuesday night. So yeah. Yeah, more to come on that one uh, as it moves forward, uh, but uh, seeing some staff role here uh, on that one, and uh, we'll keep you updated here uh, as information comes out uh, on that, both uh, uh, you and I. We've got this. We'll, we'll keep updating everybody. Uh, police chief update. Uh, we have now kind of what that process is going to look like. Uh, what did they tell you? So it's going to actually work very similar to how uh, they did the recruitment process for the city administrator. So um, at some point they're looking at doing a community and staff survey um, to, to gauge how people feel, what kind of, um, wh what kind of you know, qualities they want in the next police chief. They'll send that to staff and community members. Um, and then they're hoping to go through the job description again with what is called an equitable hiring tool. They did it with the city administrator job position where they basically just look at it and they're like, okay, is, is, is this requirement too out of reach? Does this limit the number of people? Is this a fair requirement to have? Um, so they'll review the job description using that. Um, and so then they're planning on opening the position within, um, within the month here and hopefully we'll have it open for a month. And then hopefully uh, by mid-August, uh, the police and fire commission will make a recommendation and hire someone. Um, just because police chief is a little bit different than a lot of other city, um, city roles, the city council really doesn't play a role in hiring the police chief. That's mainly all through the police and fire commission. So if you're looking to follow the process, um, you're not gonna find it at the common council. You might hear some updates here and there. But if this is something you're interested in uh, following, you're definitely gonna wanna look uh, towards the Police and Fire Commission because they'll be the ones who are leading, um, leading the, the succession process, so. 
Yeah, and as you know, um, we broadcast all the meetings, so certainly you'll be able to catch those on FACT TV. And if you miss one, certainly you can go back and uh, catch that as well. And uh, we'll uh, we'll be broadcasting and uh, those and uh, any other uh, meetings. And certainly when the survey comes out, uh, we'll make sure residents get full access to to doing that, uh, which I think led to great candidates for the city administrator position too. So uh, excited for this process to play out uh, as well. All right, and finally, uh, what what else do you have for us here as uh, we close out another great interview? You. Yeah, so as if people do not have enough uh, construction on Fish Hatchery Road, um, have not had enough construction on Fish Hatchery Road, they will uh, be redoing a small portion of the left turn lane as you get towards uh, East Cheryl Drive and the Cheryl Parkway. Um, so they're going to extend the length of the left turn lane. Um, and it will just impact how some people can get to City Hall. Obviously, there's multiple ways to get to City Hall, um, so it shouldn't be too too much of a burden. Uh, but just so people know, because that is a main thoroughfare where people go and they access City Hall, the library, uh, senior center services. Um, it's important to know that there will be construction that far down on Fish Hatchery Road too. So. It should be, only, should this be bugs better. you because it's just, it's your way. I know it's your way of coming to City Hall. So it is. now it you got to go, you just got to go down a little bit further to, uh, further to Lacey know. and it'll be okay. We I got don't you know covered. how I'm going to stomach that extra 10th of a mile, but I will do it. I can tell you <laughs> whether I'm running, whether I'm coming into work or if I go and get lunch and come back, I'm always like, all right, Cheryl, or Cheryl Lacey, Cheryl Lacey, Cheryl, you know, so it's all right. <laughs> Just another great decisions, interview. Decisions. I told you we were at the top of your game here uh, for uh, this show. Uh, Kimberly, if people do want to find uh, more out uh, about uh, what you uh, folks are working on, uh, you got a couple of ways of doing that. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, if you want to get the most up-to-date news, um, the Fitchburg Star comes out monthly, uh, but we do update it weekly, sometimes daily. So people can go to our website, connectfitchburg.com uh, in order to get those get that news. We also have been increasing our social media posting. So if you follow the Fitchburg Star on Facebook or you follow um, the Fitchburg Star on Twitter, uh, that's the easiest way to get news delivered right to your news feed. Um, we also have an email newsletter um, and you can go right to our main page at connectfitchburg.com and sign up for that there. So there are plenty of ways to get the news. Um, so you have no excuse. Exactly. There is plenty of uh, news out there to be had, and we uh, yes, love uh, providing that here uh, on Talking Fitchburg and, of course, through the Fitchburg Star. Kimberly, thank you so much, as always. Always fun to catch up with you, and we'll check back in in a couple of weeks. Looking forward to it. All right, uh, Kimberly from Fitchburg Star. Check out the website, check out the social media to stay up on the latest on what's happening here in the city of Fitchburg. Take a quick break. More to come. You're watching Talking Fitchburg. see on page four that the projections need to be blood next thursday seriously thursday can't do that uh-uh this is really inconvenient i have yoga that day i have no time for this so i can't do thursday but i can do friday Disasters don't plan ahead you can talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency don't wait communicate If you love them enough to suck the snot out of their nose at 4 a.m., then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Wrapping up the show for today, I want to thank our guests, uh, including Kimberly from the Fitchburg Star and Chad uh, Brecklin from the Fitchburg Police Department helping us out today. We'll get those interviews and all this past week's interviews up online. Check it out at Facebook, YouTube, and of course at FitchburgWI.gov where you can watch the full show. All right, as we wrap up, uh, those places you can go watch, well, Andrew's got them set up right here, Facebook, YouTube. If you haven't checked us out on Apple TV and Roku, you should download that, that app. It's pretty sweet. Just saying. That's how I watch at home. Same with Andrew. We both love watching it in HD. Have a great weekend.